and the star grows old It will snuggle up alone and cold Waiting for someone to say hello Or so I was told How very sad I shouted painfully If I could I'd let you stay with me Cause even stars require empathy Empathy, empathy, empathy Shadows roaming, lonely ghosts and broken hearts But hear when I say Your kingdom is held on the floor All right. Good morning. Hello, everyone. My name is Fluffy Waffle, and welcome to the May 2020 Fox Waffle Cup. I'm so glad that you could join us, and I hope that you have a lot of fun in the next two days. Uh, before we get started, uh, I'd like to say thank you to Darth Gabriel and the Plebs, the Crocs, Rushy, and everyone from the Loco community for coming together and making this little tournament possible. This event will be split into two days, um, and we will be watching the Platinum Gold League today and the masters and diamond league tomorrow the grand champion of each bracket will receive either their choice of a month of discord nitro or uh, a twitch subscription to their creator of choice now before we begin uh, i'm going to introduce you to the cast the caster that we have today uh rashi um so let me get him in here and uh you guys can meet him good morning good morning all right everyone this is uh rashi uh go ahead and introduce yourself I, I'm so nervous. This is my first time on on a stream ever, so I'm just gonna. Uh, okay, just uh, okay, okay. We can do this, Rushy. We can do this. Hello, my name is Rushy. Um, sometimes known as Russian Cheerios or Russell L. Uh, you know, um, I I sometimes play this uh, game. Maybe you've heard of it called StarCraft Two. Um, I'm a band teacher. I like to uh, lose games for other people's enjoyment. Uh, <laughs> all sorts of fun stuff. 
Yeah. And uh, you are actually, I mean, you ranked up to Diamond One a couple of days ago, correct? I mean, you're, you're kind of in a slump right now. I mean, not, you know, not to be very rude or anything, but. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but. Um, uh, they never tell you you're living the glory days until uh, they're already gone. So. That's right. Yep. The good news is, is uh, we'll, we'll find ourselves in Diamond One soon. Um, it's nice to see uh, that the MMR that we talked about for my graphic like a month ago is now still accurate. So, <laughs> I, I, so that was actually planned. I mean, I, I wanted to make sure that we didn't like, I didn't want to embarrass you for like putting the wrong MMR on my graphics. So I was like, no, 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 let's make, let's make Fluffy Waffle look good. <laughs> well, all right. Um, so the first game that we have lined up for today, uh, it is going to be, uh, Holy Mackerel versus Mr. Kill. Um, Mr. Kill, of course, um, he's in gold three on the EU server. And um, he's going to go up against uh, Holy Mackerel. Now, Holy Mackerel, interestingly enough, he's from South Korea. He's also in gold and he plays Zerg. Ooh. Yeah, and um, I think it's nighttime over where he is right now. So I'm, I'm really happy we can uh, he can join us. So... Um, don't go anywhere, and we will be right back with the games. Alright, we are about to head into our first game. Our players are readying up and um, it's going to be very exciting. Here we go. It should be very good. We're, we're booting up a ZVZ. Oh, a ZVZ. A ZVZ. It's my, my favorite matchup. What, what a great way to start off the Fox Waffle Cup, by the way. Exactly. Yep. There's could so many things that could go on here. So... So and I think it's also good. I mean, this is now a legitimate online tournament. We have a Korean representative. So <laughs> naturally, everyone in the chat's going, okay, he's got the South Korean flag. He's just going to win. Now right. we're just watching for the sick plays and the amazing observing work of uh, Gabe. So Exactly. All right. We're going to hop luck, into the game here. And, and uh, beat him, probably. Oh, here we go. Baby, I am so ready to get started here. Spawning in the bottom left of Everdream. It's our purple Zerg player representing Gold League and everyone else in it. Give it up for Mr. Kill. And in the top right corner, our Cyan Zerg player and our South Korean, it is Holy Mackerel. Already we, we see ourselves with possibly a little bit of cheese here, uh, Fluffy. Uh, Mr. Kill deciding to go for that 14 uh, for that fourteen timing on his uh, hatchery here. You think he's going to be flooding lings with the 14, 13, 12? I think it could very possibly be a cheese. And, uh, well, if our, uh, our player doesn't scout this... Um, we are, he's going to be in very big trouble. 
Yeah. So it, it seems it seems as if that's the direction that we're heading right now. So um, scouting wise, this is going to be visible uh, simply just uh, by that first overlord getting there and going, wait, th this creeps kind of spread out really, really far. But the, the problem with that is that Mackerel's not going to scout this for at least another 30 seconds before it is done. Um, what's really interesting is uh, that this is something that Holy Mackerel can hold if he can uh, get it enough information to push this back and pl plan accordingly. His spawning pool is really only about 10 seconds behind, so that defender's advantage and the time that Mr. Kill needs to run across the map, uh, Holy Mackerel can absolutely be prepared for this. Absolutely. Uh, but I think um, it is transforming somewhat in, into a standard game. You know, there's not like a bunch of leans on the production tab as of yet. Um, but of course, you know, he could stop drone production at any time, start building lings and run across the map like no tomorrow. And um, and that way, um, that way, the Zerg player who uh, who is not ready, right? He's just he's just going to fall, you know, unless he somehow gets that magical surround. Did you see that game in uh, TSL? I think it was Serral versus Elazer, where in that one game, Elazer was going for some sort of 12 pull, but then Serral <laughs> yes. just... Blah, blah. Yeah, Cyril finding uh, a way to be his normal self and, yeah. and just uh, make the magic happen with uh, his micro. Um, quite an interesting uh, turn of events here. So Holy Mackerel moving across the map, but he's got a lair on the way. That's an early lair. As well. So these lings are going to engage against each other. Ooh, some quick little micro back and forth there to give himself a little bit more DPS and maybe grab one or two hit points of regeneration. Uh, Mr. Kill able to kind of hold that down for now, but it's going to be a layer follow-up that's going to be interesting. We're going to have to see if uh, there's going to be any transition into maybe Spire tech. We haven't seen a Roach Warren go down just yet. Uh, what do you think, Fluffy? What do you, where do you think this is headed for Holy Mackerel? I actually don't know because Holy Mackerel, as far as I can tell, I don't think that he has... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I don't think he has Metabolic Boost yet. I, I, I don't know if, uh, because... Uh, or is it just really late me me metabolic boost for, for Mr. Kill? But, I, I mean, the Roach Warren is down here uh, for both players. So I think we're just going to have Roach versus Roach Slugfest. Yeah, and, and that Roach Warren just about finished here. Plus one missile attack on the way as well. I think this is just going to be a really quick plus one Roach timing here by Holy Mackerel. Completely foregoing metabolic boost on his Zerglings and uh, opting to save the gas for more production of Roaches. And there goes that Roach speed. So this is going to be a really quick and hard hitting timing attack. Yep, and if Mr. Kill's not ready for this, he's one upgrade behind. He's researching Burrow, but I don't think that's necessarily going to help because there's no tunneling clause. Uh, but he is, um, look at this, uh, Mr. Kill is actually heading across right now. If he hits right now, maybe he can uh, he can see stunt the damage of this incoming roach attack. But look at that, the roaches are already on their way out here. Getting those two Zerglings on the outside, but... Um, Let's see, um, Holy Mackerel is posturing out here, and he he looks ready for a push once that upgrade finishes. Oh, and I think Mr. Kill got a little nervous when he saw those roaches. He didn't realize that he had uh, an advantage on numbers, and before those evolution chambers went down to help uh, fill in the wall, he might have been able to jump on top of that, and at that point, Holy Mackerel is just uh, piddling out roaches. But now, uh, six more roaches in production that... Uh, that supply counter is going to continue to skyrocket here, and Holy Mackerel is going to just wind up for a big punch right to the gut of Mr. Kill. But uh, Holy Mackerel right now, you know, it seems like he's a little bit scared because of all those Zerglings he um, he saw, therefore, and he's, um, he's you see, he's walling off, right, with the Queen and three Evolution Chambers. Uh, but the supply lead says that if Holy Mackerel pushes right now, he possibly could have a chance of winning the game. And look at that, Ravagers on the production tab. Yeah, and, and actually, uh, the Ravagers are good. I don't know if seven of them are necessary at this point. Uh, that plus one upgrade makes it so valuable against Zerglings. He's able to two-shot those Zerglings with a Roach and uh, eliminate a lot of the threat there. I'm not exactly sure what the damage ratio is for Ravagers. I imagine it's rather similar, but that's 100 supply moving across the map. Mr. Kill's got a third base, but he's got to have production behind it. 1-1 um, one, one is going to finish up for those Zerglings. I don't know. This is, a, this is a lot of army here to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, 
Well, um, we have uh, the third base of Mr. Kill under threat right now with all those Ravagers. Let's see if Mr. Kill can uh, wrap around and potentially uh, do any damage. Looks like that third base is going to go down. Four drones along with it. And here is the main engagement. Corrosive Biles going down, zoning those units away. Those Zerglings are going to try to come in for a surround, but doesn't get it quite yet. All right, maybe a little bit. He's backing himself into that corner very smart. And this Queen's going to get hit, but, but they're going to get Biled down. And it looks like that Holy Mackerel is going to come out on top of this. Yeah, plus one is so incredibly strong on these roaches. And after all of the Zerglings uh, are removed from the game, this is just a rollover at this point. Holy Mackerel's going to push on up. He's going to see he's going to see Burrow, but uh, there's not, not a whole lot that he's going to be able to do with that here. The Roach Warren is going to be under fire here. A couple of vials go down to help eliminate that. More Ravagers being roached in to uh, help take care of those low HP Roaches, and that's all it takes. GG is called. Game number one going it to our Korean Zerg player in the top corner. Well done. All right. So we're going to hop into our next game. Um, now, for some reason, production didn't uh, add the score feature to the templates. I don't know who works. Production must be an idiot. But uh, uh, we are going to hop into our next game very shortly here. Yeah, so I, a, a good good game number one. Uh, it's It's fun to see. Executing that plus one speed roach timing and actually getting pretty decent supply behind it as well. All right. Um, uh -oh. So, uh oh. The void, the void took me. The Where did I go, chat? <laughs> I'm right here. What happened? All right, we're about to hop into our next match. Uh, I think it is Holy Mackerel that is up one right now. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to get started here in a second. <laughs> Holy Mackerel's in the chat stream sniping. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's not good. Where is it? How do how do we how do we ban somebody from watching a stream? <laughs> yeah. I see how it is. I see how it is. But you know what? We're gonna we're gonna hope that everything is for the best and that everybody's playing by all the rules here in the Fox Waffle Cup as we step in it to map number two. It's gonna be on Zen L E spawning in the bottom left. Our purple Zerg. He's down 0-1. Needs two wins if he wants to advance to the, the grand finals. Give it up for Mr. Kill. And in the top left corner representing... Or top right corner, excuse me. Representing the Plebs Clan, it is our red Zerg player, Holy Mackerel. Who, if he wins this game, he's going to take the series. Yeah, it's a very, very strong play in game number one. But, you know, Mr. Kill's got some... Uh, He's got some tricks up his sleeve here, dropping yeah. a 14 pool. Um, so this isn't this isn't as aggressive or all any as a uh, 12 pool might be, but uh, it does open up a lot of options for aggression. More than likely, we're probably still going to see a natural go down um, at the at the location uh, where you put a natural. Uh, <laughs> great, great words there. There we um, go. <laughs> Uh, so, so this doesn't necessarily have to be all in, but this is also a very strong uh, pool timing. I think uh, Scarlet uh, executed this rather well in oh. uh, GSL, but this is going into a Roach Warren. So this is a slight deviation here. I'm wondering if he's going to be able to have the gas to support this income. There goes the hatchery. Well, I know. 
He doesn't have the money for a hatchery yet. Yeah. But he's I'm, definitely ready. Yeah, this is this is very interesting because uh, with one base and one gas, you can only do so much, right? You can only make so many roaches. Roaches cost a lot of gas, you know? And he's probably going to have to get the second base up. And the thing is, if he isn't aggressive with those roaches whenever he makes them, uh, they're just, they're just going to sit at home and uh, Holy Mackerel is just going to get a higher and higher... Uh, e economic lead and eventually just overpower him. So that's probably one of the bigger game sense things that you start to learn at about this point. Oh, that drone, <laughs> that drone. is taking its mandated union break right now. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that, oh, oh, yeah, oh okay, back to work. Back to work. Over, they they gave us benefits said, back. Yeah. Off we go. Yeah. Um, but that's one of the biggest game sense things I think that you really focus on in uh, gold and platinum league is starting to realize, okay, so if I want to go for a certain unit composition at a specific timing, what do I need in terms of income? Right. And I know that, I mean, there's a lot of diamond players, myself included, that still try and focus on that and try to min-max exactly what you need so that way you can invest the exact amount of resources into the build order that you want to go into. And Holy Mackerel is going to build a Baneling Nest and a Roach Warren behind this. Um, I, You know, I don't hate that he's trying to prepare for every possible scenario here. Um, Mr. Kill is is kind of fired up and ready to go here. He does have a slight army lead as of this moment. We'll have to see if he's able to hold on to that. But there's a full wall off there and to the side of Holy Mackerel's base, Fluffy. I mean, that's going to be difficult for Mr. Kill to engage upon. Absolutely. And when that's one of the features, I suppose you could say, of Zen Ali. You know, it's very easy to wall off to the right, to the middle. And uh, opponents are going to have to break through that so that you have a relatively safe second base. And so, um, right now, Mr. Kill is just amassing troops. Uh, he is, uh, he's not building drones. And that's one of the things I'm very concerned about because as a Zerg, you build drones or you build units. I mean, that's the most effective way to do it. You know, you try to drone up as aggressively at the start, but uh, of course you can't just, <laughs> if you're untouched, ideally, you know, you can build a lot of drones, but you're gonna have to build some units for defense. And um, if those units are sitting at home, you know, they're not really doing it, doing anything. And I would just love to see Mr. Kill go out on the map right now and uh, get, gauge the opponent's position and realize that he has a huge army lead. Well, I love this scout that's coming out from Mr. Kill, sending the lone Zergling in to check out a mineral line, see what's here. He's going he's gonna to pop one of those Banes. That's a wow. pretty good uh, kill. Uh, Holy Mackerel is going to see this giant amount of forces, and if we watch the production tab, we're probably just going to see army production spike here for Holy Mackerel as he is going for that plus one speed roach timing again. And Holy Mackerel, who is down 26 to 9 army supply, look at that jump going from uh, 9 all the way up to 21, and in the course of about 30 seconds, he's completely closed the gap. I mean, that's, that is truly the difference. Absolutely. And that's what a in good the, economy can do styles. for you. Yeah, that's the, I mean, that, that's exactly what a good economy can do for you. And, and double the worker count right now for Holy Mackerel. He can just get as many army units as you want, considered he has the right amount of larva. And Mr. Kills is going to come over here and say, oh, man, I can't keep doing that. I got to build drones. Look at that. Five drones in the production tab. And this is this is going to be kind of a slippery slope here. Uh, plus one carapace is going to finish up for Mr. Kill, so he is going to have uh, he is going to have an upgrade to counteract what Holy Mackerel has gone for. So plus one attack will cancel out plus one carapace, but it's going to be that sheer numbers game. I mean, look at that supply ninety one to sixty five, and Holy Mackerel just continuing to hold down the R button right now. Absolutely. Is it R both in like grid and standard? Do you know? I'll be really honest. I, I don't know. I just assume that for most of those units that that the first letter is what it is. Um, and it's pretty close for most Zerg units. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it just happens to coincide with grid. I mean, I'm sure both of us use grid, right? Oh, uh, yeah. So the most effective way to do it. I mean, I remember in Brood War, when you play Protoss, you had to reach all the way over for the P button just to uh, build some probes over there. Oh, baby. Holy Mackerel is uh, is winding up here. He is grabbing that plus one carapace as well, and he he's, he's done his scouting. He's taken that one roach, and he saw, wait a minute. 
I see that you don't have a whole lot going on at your base. So I'm just going to wait. I'm going to get uh, about five or six more roaches. And then we're just going to pile across the map. He's even got a couple of banelings in here. And with some good micro, we could see those zerglings of Mr. Kill pop almost immediately. 123 to 83. This is going to be an uphill battle. This might be an up mountain battle here for <laughs> Mr. Kill, but he's going to try and do his best. Look at that spread. That spread is holy beautiful. Mackerel. Look at that surround. Oh, man. Oh, what a beautiful concave. Uh, this third base is almost almost surely going to fall or be canceled here. Is he going to allow it to finish? He he's is gonna absolutely going finish. to allow it to finish. He's going to use that to try and mitigate some damage here. All of Mr. Kill's army does push forward. Good Ravager Vials hitting mm. a good chunk of the army here. He's going to have to fall back into the choke, but that's going to open up that third base to more damage. Holy Mackerel is going to turn around and engage the army. Takes a good chunk of it and it picks off the hatchers. The third does fall. More units do go down, and this is just a number game at this point. Files uh, allow uh, Holy Mackerel to push forward here. That natural is going to be under fire as well, and everything is slowly being pushed back. Mr. Kill just does not have any army to respond anymore. 72 to 16 army supply. This is going to be a very, very difficult to deal with, and I think Holy Mackerel has uh, done it. He has shoved on in and secured his space in the grand finals of the plat gold bracket of the Fox Waffle Cup. G G. G, -G. All right. I mean, that was a uh, excellent, very well done by Holy Mackerel. Uh, I, I mean, I really like that build. Very strong. It'll get you up very fast on the ladder. And it's clear that he's played that build uh, quite a few times. He's got, he's got it down to a science. He knows the maps where he needs to wall off and uh, and grab the uh, advantages that he can take with that. So I think he's, I think he's gonna probably continue to flex that build order into the grand finals. But we're gonna have to see. We'll have to wait one more series here as we get ready for our next. Uh, portion of the bracket. It's going to be a Terran versus Protoss. Boofty versus Phosphorium. Uh, right. Talk to me about these two players. Now, okay, so uh, they've been trash-talking each other uh, ever since the tournament began, and they say that they each have a couple of tricks up their sleeve, so this should be very, very fun to watch. I am I have extremely high hopes for this game. Um, and um, whenever we come back, we are going to prepare for Boofty versus Phosphorium, and it is going to be very exciting that I can assure you of.
Yo, yep. Thanks, you're doing a nice job as well. If you put um, the top player with six points and the bottom player with nine points, it'll be hilarious. All right, we are back and we are prepared to have what should be a very interesting series against Boofty versus Phosphorium. And um, there's a little personal stake in this. Uh, apparently the winner of this game uh, is going to get, you know, the best viewer game, you know, the most entertaining game. And they're going to be getting a special role on another server, very coveted. Tell me more. <laughs> okay, so this is um, this role is called Fluffy Fact, and it's just I it's on my server that I created like two years ago, and um, it's just a channel that has private access only to me and the moderators, and um, other people can see it as well. But it's just like facts, random facts about like literally anything, right? And there's one a day, and um, well. A lot of people want to post there, so um, this is, I think the winner of this game is going to get that. All right, um, our administrator is saying that we are almost ready, and um, our players have confirmed as well. Uh, what do you think about the state of uh, ZV, no, TVP right now, Rushy? State of TVP, um, I mean... We could talk two different directions with that uh, pre-patch and post-patch. Yeah. Um, I'd say right now, uh, TVP still feels a little Terran favored. Uh, maybe probably at the lower levels. Yeah. I think there's a lot of uh, I think there's a lot of uh, possibility and potential with Protoss uh, that's very micro-heavy in this matchup. So we'll, we'll have to see what our players are capable of in in this upcoming game uh but i'm excited i think this will be a, a good chance to show off the other the other races other than zerg which is weird but yeah i i suppose they deserve a little bit of love too yep so, so we're gonna spawn into golden wall here for map number one this best of three more like golden meme am i right yeah <laughs> <laughs> you want to check that overlay oh yep i am um... Supposed to be on this overlay. All right, here we go. Ah, not a problem. <laughs> I just didn't want to, didn't want to introduce until we could see. Oh, the beautiful pink Protoss player spawning in the bottom right of Golden Wall. Give it up for Phosphorium. I don't know where everyone's camera is. Oh, there we go. And in the very, the left corner of Golden Wall LE. 
is our Frenchman, the Green Terran player, Boofty. Boofty, Boofty. Boofty. Now, okay, so wh what do you think? Because in GSL, I think the last Zerg player, Dark, the best of us, has been knocked out. Can you believe oh. it? No, oh, Dark, why? And I was, and it was, uh, ironically like bragging to one of my friends my real life friends um like oh yeah dark's gonna clean up ty easy he should be super favored and then what ty just three o's him and it's like <laughs> you think you think that because you're the blizzcon champion that you can just have advantage over me well sir i'm a gsl caster <laughs> and the casting curse is real i just said you're gonna win three oh so it, clearly he had no chance Absolutely, and it's like nerf Zerg, right? I mean, very, very tippy top tier of uh, of skill. <laughs> oh, nerf Zerg, so strong. <laughs> but this this definitely proves that um, the the state of the game is, I would say, um, it's on the verge of being changed. Of course, but you know, the Terran and the Protoss have um, have gone ahead or have found their stride just at the very end of this, and you know, especially as a Zerg player playing against Terran Bio, that kind of hurts a little bit. Medivacs, they can be in like a million places at once and it's really hard, even though you got your Zergling, your Banelings, your Hydras, or whatever you want to build, it's kind of hard. Well, I think it's, uh, to, to speak to a little bit of the changes here as we do wind up, uh, not a whole lot happening here. Phosphorium is uh, holding back on his second base, working on getting that robotics facility down. Um, but uh, it's it's, I think we're going to see a lot more um, Hydraling Bane coming out. Uh, mines are going to be a lot more uh, prevalent in the TVZ matchup, uh, what with the change to uh, only requiring armory for those mines to disappear into the ground and become invisible uh, permanently. I, uh, that's going to be the natural shift, I think. Uh, we might be seeing a push more towards getting Broodlords out in a quicker manner once again. But uh, but I agree with you. I think the bio, uh, the state of bio in TVZ is incredibly strong. And it's oh, yeah. going to continue to get stronger. Oh, yeah. All right. So let's have a look over at Terran right now. Looks like we just opened up 111. Widow memes coming out of that factory. Um, now, Widow memes are, are pretty good because they can take down like that tier one unit area of any race you got your zerglings your banelings your marines your zealot stalker and um they're hidden of course and uh they got a lot of splash damage so that kind of hurts are we getting i would love to see widow meme drops right now that would be amazing well and i was and that's kind of what i was thinking there's a lot of uh there's a lot of airspace here on golden wall to be able to sneak a medevac full of widow mines over there is one uh observer on the bottom side into the pocket base of the terran but it's, I mean, there's still a lot of ways that you can get a, a freight of Widow memes over to the opposite side of the map. But as of right now, Boofty uh, opting to just hang out at the front here, just chill around the bonfire, uh, make some s'mores, tell some horror stories as <laughs> uh, Phosphorium gets a good scout out here. He does see everything. He does see the uh, two more racks coming in, which would indicate a continuation into bio uh getting that engineering bay down at the back side as well yeah and it looks like a war prism is going to be constructed on the right side of the map sentries looks like he's walled himself completely in and uh robotics facility is going to be uh no yeah i obviously i don't know protoss very well but it is the robotics facility that produces the immortals correct I'm actually surprised we haven't seen Immortals uh, yeah. yet. Um, so he's got two War Prisms. Yeah. And what, he was going for uh, plus one shields, I, I think. Oh, yeah. He got, he got that completed. So, oh, yeah. So plus one shield upgrade. And a third War a Prism third War here. Prism. Fluffy, are we going to see the Micro God come <laughs> out of Phosphorium here? It could very well be. I mean... Wow, that's an unprecedented amount of war prisms. Even at this point, Boofy's gonna gonna spot that. Even two is kind of yeah. Look at that. It's kind of strange going on here. Look at this. Sentries, 
and war prisms there is so much micro potential in here and you could um you could really come in and do yeah <laughs> you know i just like war prisms okay now hear oh. me out here let me let me let's let's oh my god <laughs> a fourth war prism okay now hear me out let's 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 hypothesize here all right so he's got a good chunk of bio okay he yeah. could very easily load all four of these warp prisms, park them at different corners of Boofty's base. Now, you drop the units so they have to engage, but you're dropping in four places. And then behind that, you still have a four gate. You keep warping in at different points. So you warp in on one side and then uh, Boofty has to pull his whole army to deal with it. And then you warp in on the other side. And then you warp in from each different corner Think of the mind games. And you would just keep going and Warp going. Prism. It, oh my goodness. What is... Now, the only thing that could shut this down is if Boofty just walks across the map and kills him. But do I... Oh, it's happening. It's happening. Oh, get pogged, chat. Oh, get no. Pogged. <laughs> so he's actually sending his entire force over to try to stop this at once. Look at that, sieging up his tanks in there. Let's see if he's going to be in range of those gateways. Once he gets vision, the uh, okay, tanks are going to... Once he's got vision, those front two tanks are going to just start there we raining go. It down. And here it comes, the, the wall. The wall is in danger. Fixed force fields. Forward here, some very good force fields, oh, yeah. though. I mean, he, I think he's got a force field for every uh, warp person that he has. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's relevant, yes very uh very well pointed out wow the, okay the two forward gates do go down some very nice force fields do uh split the army in half <laughs> some very good guardian shields going down to help negate some of that damage but uh but Boofy's gonna have the, the supply behind it 61 to 29. yeah and it looks like the cyber core has gone down so i believe the only thing he can build is zealots right now and that's just not very good in uh when you're trying to throw down force fields and shoot them from behind so uh, now, now if he could position the warp prisms on top of those tanks and warp in charge odd, I'm just so I'm so hyped for the potential, but they are just <laughs> kind of hanging out right now. Oh, okay. Oh, all the probes get pulled off of the line. Not not a surprising situation here by Phosphorium. I just I, I just want to see the micro man. <laughs> Mega Man psh, Micro Man. You betcha. You betcha. There you go. Oh, and, and well, what is going on here? I mean, yeah, there's an immortal. I mean, there's... Look look at this. You know, have you seen immortals in war prisms? All right, you know how magical that is? That is that is just like... Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> just gonna, just gonna shoot away. Now, I'm gonna tell you the natural enemy of a warp prism, an immortal, and a dream is literally five, five marines. Like it might, it might even be a lower number. Yeah, yep. And uh... so these tanks are going to uh... <laughs> these tanks are going to find the wall. Boofy's going to go say what? He's... Oh, oh, the dream, the dream. He's so confused about why Phosphorium hasn't left the game right now. You know, he's he's going <laughs> to. All right, I think that's GG's call. And congratulations to Boofy, who's won the first game in the series. I was secretly hoping that Phosphorium had gotten like one probe out and was starting to build like ninja bases all around the map. <laughs> there were there were so many potential, so much potential for like mind games in this uh, game number one that I I think it leaves it open for game number two. Like you don't want to you don't want to give away all your skills in the first game, right? Absolutely, yeah. All right, as we get loaded up into the next map here, um, I, I'm hoping, I mean, I'm, I'm smelling some cheese. I don't know what was, uh, what's leading me to believe that, but um, I am I am hyped. I'm, I'm hoping to see some sort of uh, proxy racks or maybe a cannon rush even, right? Good old cannon rush. Good old be really fun here. Rush. Game number two. Maybe we a little provolone, maybe a little brie, a little gouda. A little gouda, uh, yeah, my favorite. A little Limburger. Oh, it could be act, like actually stinky. <laughs> Beautiful. You, you know, Wisconsin's actually the, uh, I think that's a state here in America that's known for their cheese, right? Have we actually uh, 
tried Wisconsin cheese? What do you think? No, I haven't tried it yet. I was just like, have oh. you tried it? Oh, absolutely. So, so Iowa is, it's not like super close. Cause I'm, I'm on the far side of Iowa, but right. uh, Iowa and Wisconsin are really close to each other. Right. I've been to Wisconsin a couple of times and uh, have experienced Wisconsin cheese. And it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Now, yeah. I will tell you that it pales in comparison to Swiss cheese. Oh, not not like the cheese with the holes in it, but like going to the country Switzerland and having cheese there. <laughs> you are very, uh, you are a man of very refined taste, Rushy. Go ahead and well, do the honors. Refined is not the right word, but we are jumping <laughs> into simulacrum here for game number two. Spawning in the bottom right, our pink protoss looking to secure a win in this best of three. Give it up. For phosphorium. And in the top left corner, the pride of the French. It is Boofty. Le Bouf. Le, le Boofty. Le Boofty. Okay, I've been, I've been practicing my French. Are you ready? All right, go for it. Je voudrais un crepe, s'il vous plaît. I have no idea what that meant, but that that sounded incredible. What do you think, Chad? Um, was that was that good? Was that like top tier French? I'm going to tell you that uh, the whole time I said that, I was wearing a beret, I had a pencil thin mustache, and I was scowling at all of the, <laughs> the Americans that are in my country. Right. And you had a croissant on the side and a, and a baguette. A croissant, in the oven. and the Eiffel Tower was behind me on my green screen. It was. I made, I made sure it was full on French. Do you want to know what I said? What did you say? I said I would like a crepe, please. You would like a crepe, please. <laughs> yes, because I'm hungry. All right, well, you you may not get a crepe, but you are going to get proxy barracks. So what do you think about that inside of the base? Oh, <laughs> I love this. So boot. Oh, Shh. oh, so this is Can beautiful. you see it? Can you see it? I don't know. Well, I don't know if he uh, spotted it. Take a peek at the vision. He spotted uh, the it. Vision. He, he spots one. Yeah. He doesn't so know about the other the one. This is the interesting part. He doesn't know that the second barracks is already there and there is a reactor already out so this is where life's gonna get interesting so boot so okay here's the mind games so boofy's like oh no you spotted me i'm gonna stop building this barracks and just let it go oh dang you caught Aww. me but in in reality i mean the real the real danger is already in his face Absolutely. And these cannons in the front, they aren't going to do anything. Not when there are two Marines spraying their bullets in the mineral line, okay? You can't do anything about it unless you, I mean, get your own units in there. But um, Phosphorium is currently um, under the impression that he has thwarted this proxy, but in fact, he has not. Yeah, so so the, the, real, the real game is just beginning here. That's a factor. And, and I don't think Phosphorium is going to feel confident enough to go off to the left. He... He's already in his mind. He's already done it. He's already fixed it. He's he stopped the factory uh, out across the map, and that that oh. should have been the that should have been the tell. Like, wait a minute, this is a factory. Okay, so now he sees the factory float. He has got to know that he's got to look here, and that's gonna be Hellions coming out. I oh, believe. No. In just a moment. Oh my gosh. Oh, Phosphorium, Phosphorium, you gotta go to the left, my dude. You gotta do something here. Oh, it's gonna be Widow Mines. It's gonna be Widow Memes. Oh, look, Boofty is just looking to style on Phosphorium. Okay, he's just gonna gonna sneak in here, gonna get a couple probe kills. Oh man, this is uh, this is gonna be very interesting. I'm just I'm just surprised at the fact that um, Phosphorium saw that factory in the air. And he just <laughs> he didn't put two and two together. Like, where would that factory go? Um, probably nowhere. Nothing to worry about. At this point in time, look at that. Phosphorium's troops are out on the map, and I don't know if he has enough to hold this here. Oh, here well, we he's go. He's going to put down two more gateways in the, in the main, which is good from a production sense, but it's going to be unfortunate when these Widow Mines just completely obliterate. And and he goes, what? wait, uh, what happened? Uh, six, six probes. Oh, oh, no. This is a disaster. Yeah, all of these probes. I mean, some really good splitting uh, from the gas probes, but... There's just nothing here to deal with all of these. And a couple more probes go down. 13, 14. One stalker. One stalker and a dream, Fluffy Waffle. One stalker and a dream indeed. 
very, very lofty dream. <laughs> so we did get the natural down. So he's going to be able to transfer those workers. He's still got a, a, a mostly saturated mineral line there. Um, I think uh, Boofty, Boofty is actually not quite out of this just yet. He does need more Marines. More of these stalkers are going to get warped in. They are going to have good range against the Widow Mines. So, so he's got to be careful. Boofty is not 100% out of this just yet. Oh, that was actually... I don't know if he intended to do that. That was a good, uh, that was a good split. He walked in there and just went... Exactly, and, and that and that's the advantage that Phosphorium has right now. Okay, so he does have another Marine. I mean, he's got a. I think he flip flops. He is. He is. That oh, was okay, unfortunate. So not a good split there. Um, more stock are gonna go down. I think he needs to flip flop those buildings. He really needs to get on top of his uh, Marine production. But more Widow Mines coming forward. They're just going to uh, zip oh. on in. Uh, that, that's it. That's do it. good night for the stalkers. But now he doesn't have anything to attack anything else with. I think Phosphorium needs he needs to hold firm here. He cannot bail just yet. He needs to build some probes. He just needs to recover. But the supply. Look at that. Oh man. And he's got another he's got another set of barracks and factory and starport on the other side. He's building liberators. Yeah, the liberators are gonna be difficult to deal with here. The mines have been allowed to reset. Uh, Phosphorium had a window where I think he could have tried to push this all off, but unfortunately that time has come and passed. He's not going to be able to clean up the mines in his mineral line anytime soon. Warping. Oh, that oh, unfortunate no. death. Doesn't even, or actually it might have been the Zealot. Doesn't even get a chance to warp in here. And this is starting to look pretty grim. Those mines, man. Ugh. more and more mines continue to come out here comes the one liberator um how many how many dozens of kills is that liberator going to get we're going to find out in a moment as phosphorium continues to focus on the widow mine and then the do you hear that i think it duh, dun, duh, dun, as the head liberator is. just waiting to pounce waiting for the right moment stalkers are up in the main base boofty now's your no, time no go do it do go it go for it boofty boss for him is he's making the most of this though this is the moment i was talking about i think if he was would have been able to do this about a couple minutes ago um he might have been able to push this all the way back and away oh here we go Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> okay. Okay. He gets the pull on that. So only right. five kills. But, okay. Uh, Phosphorium currently has almost no income and has zero income now. So, t so talk to me, Fluffy Waffle. How do you like Phosphorium's chances if he's not mining? I don't like them <laughs> at all, period. I mean, uh, it's just, you know, having, having not enough minerals is kind of scary. You know, it's it's like, man, what am I doing here? Do I uh, do I really have enough to afford an army? And you, you, when you have no mining, okay, that's that's when it gets like that's like, oh no, <laughs> what do I do? I mean, look, look at this. I mean, but Boofty's just ramping up production on the other side of the map. I'm pretty sure he I mean he could move in right now, but um, but oh, there's another liberator. He snuck in. <laughs> Oh, and this one's actually zoned out a little bit better um, against those stalkers. But the stalkers are going to get back in and behind, and they will uh, eventually clean that up. Probes are going to be allowed to mine once again. Boofty, I think, just needs to like he's. I think he's doing okay. There he finally goes. He holds down the marine button and just uh, tries to mass produce marines as fast as his barracks will produce them. Uh, I, I really, I would really, really love, I mean, Boofty's got the mines. He's got great mine covered. I think you flip-flop the barracks in the factory, and you just make as many Marines as your heart desires. And you, you, you come out with a win, but Phosphorium is making, he's giving it all he's got. And That's I right. absolutely love the, I love the tenacity in this game. Absolutely. And, um... Well, if Phosphorium can somehow win this, you know, this is like greatest comeback in StarCraft 2. I'm calling it already, right? I mean, look at that. His cannon is going to go up. And he's probably going to see those Widow memes and uh, probably not engaged in front of them. But, um, you know, 
It's 47 to 8 army supply. I don't, and look at those mules. Three mules dropping at once. My word. Yeah, with Boofty taking the second base, uh, this this becomes increasingly more difficult. It, as if Phosphorium had a good uh, stake in the game uh, a moment ago, having a second base is going to make that <laughs> even more difficult. Uh -oh. These warpins, these brutal warpins. All right, that stalker's got to come up here. Can engage those marines in the mines when they're not allowed to fight. But uh, two more mines come out onto the field. This is just the slowest siege against a Protoss I maybe have ever seen. And I, <laughs> and I absolutely love it. I think this is, a, the, like, if you came to the Fox Waffle Cup for uh, clean, crisp macro and professional builds, shame on you. Shame, yeah, you shame on you. Here, you should have come here for the memes and the dreams, and you're getting both of them. Exactly. What, what do you think you're watching? GSL right now? No, -uh, no. We, I mean, we got, we got, uh, we got StarCraft, but uh, just a different, a different type of StarCraft, if you will. All right. Well, on top of that, you can't really combine our two names to make something as like beautiful as Tastosis. <laughs> like ru Rush, Rushiful, Rushy Waffle. Uh, rushy, no, no. Rushy Waffle. I mean, it, it it's got potential. Right, but th that's like four syllables right rushy waffle but taste toast is just three you know it's much more elegant yeah there's something just refined about the, the three syllables of taste toast right oh five more mines oh man down. oh oh no and those oh. mines in the mineral line got a pot shot right there so here's the so here's the upside for phosphorium about these mines is the mines cannot deal damage in uh like a direct oh oh that did you see that was a clever though. move um, he, he can't deal direct damage to the buildings. So if Phosphorium were somehow able to clean up all of the bio in his base, he could just continue warping in in uh, meaningful locations. But and, when and you see Boofty step up into triple-digit supply <laughs> and Phosphorium's, like, barely scraping by with 22. It looks dark. It, get, it gets a little bit a little bit of a dark scenario here. Yeah. Oh. Oh wow! Must have had vision with that cannon. Oh my yeah, God, that that, that cannon uh, providing vision right there of those. That's pretty far. I mean, I, that's why your suggestion for um, you know for him to flip flop those tech production buildings and start pumping out marines. You know, marines are going to be a lot better for sustained damage, and I think he could have won the game a lot easier. But I, at this point, I think Boofy's just styling. All right, he's just kind of like, you know, I'm gonna take my time. I know I've got this. You know, just in case. He's wanting to put on a good show for his fans, so yeah. in like the post-game interview, he, he's like, "Yeah, I just wanted to wanted to put on great games for my fans, and I hope you're all proud of me. I'm gonna <laughs> continue to build uh, more and more Widow Mines in future games, at least 21 or more. <laughs> at, least, at least, yeah. I mean, how many are one right now? They're like 21 Widow <laughs> Mines. Wow. So uh, I think the French are. Um, they have a. They have a player on the scene right now, Clem. He's headed up. Yeah. He's just like a really strong Terran. I mean, he's okay. He's okay. Just he's a okay. Bit. He only beat Cyril uh, live on stream yesterday. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Cyril. And believe it. Like Zerg. Zerg's not even. Zerg's not even a viable yeah. racer in 2020 Ir anymore. Irrelevant. All right. <laughs> All right. So, so we we have reached a point in this game where. Um, I think literally here's the play. Boofty un unburrows every single mine, just walks them forward, and just burrows them all at once. And, and it's game over. There's, I, yeah, and it's just game over. But but Boofty doesn't play like that. He right. doesn't want to make it that that simple. He wants he wants the elegance of being able to siege not only on the front, not only in his main. But also in his natural, all at the same time. Right. This now, is like we're gonna a... see if 116 army supply is enough to kill one cannon, two cannons, and 22 army supply. I'm not <laughs> sure. We're oh, gonna no. have to see here. As Phosphorium does come out here, we're gonna get this hype cast all the way up. One of the tanks goes down. I can't believe that. But Phosphorium's got a chance here. Liberator's gonna siege on forward. He is gonna be able to push that back. 
all those stalkers get back into the main base as they try to regroup here, pushing Boofty back. Fox Forium's like, I don't need 117 supply to <laughs> deal with you. Cannon is going to engage on those Marines. The Marines are going to be forced back here. Those mines, way too timid to move on forward uh -oh. here. I can't uh -oh. believe. Oh, no. It's happening. The it's happening. Brave. There's only five mines here, though. What, fluffy Waffle? Oh, oh one of the oh. mines up top. They saying, detonated. I'm not going to let you do that. Boom, and... boom. That's all of his army units. God. Wait a minute. Oh, but it's going to be a sick warp in here of two stalkers. <laughs> two stalkers. Those two stalkers have a dream. Cold is the void, and so is Phosphorium's uh, will of a steel here. He's not going to let Boofty just push on in here. Boofty's no, going to no. have to get more army across the map if he's going to want to win game number two. <laughs> Oh, big. What is happening right now? In here. Two adepts going to be able to continue pushing that back. Wait, where did those stalkers go? Those stalkers. They just died. Were too OP. Yeah. They were too OP. And Phosphorium's like, I'm going to give these back to you because clearly, clearly, I don't want to like make this look like, oh, Protoss is Imba. We've got to make sure we take away those, uh, those balance updates that we're getting for them. Two more adepts on the way in. The pro the probes are just they're just dancing at this point. Yeah, they're so scared. They're so scared of mines. They're like, oh, 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 no, no mine. Oh, no, oh, no mine. Oh, you think you think they're scared of mines? They're actually just flexing on the fact I don't need to be mining right now. <laughs> I could be doing anything I want. That's how strong Protoss is, right? They don't they don't even need a mine. They just make units. Now wait a minute. He's gonna walk in here with eight marines, and is he killing a base right now? But. This I is no so OP. On. I can't believe how unbalanced Terran is right now. <laughs> how, what do you mean that eight Marines can take on 12 probes? What? 12 is greater than eight. I, I don't yeah. understand what's happening here. This is proves that Terran's Imba, obviously. Nerf like, Terran uh, right now. Here, let me just do, let me just do this. Dear David Kim, I am sick and tired of these Terrans, GG by the way for Boofty, well done. GG, well done, well done. I am well done. sick and tired of the imbalance in StarCraft 2. Please address this immediately. I think Marines should be removed from the game. Sincerely, Rushy. I think the fact that you used immediately will really get their attention and just like make them, make the entire game balanced by pretty much effectively removing Terran. Yeah. Like, I'm confident. Um, I think if we, I, I, I think it's worth considering. Let's open up the balance test mod and go, oh, you can pick Zerg or Protoss. Okay. Right. Wonderful. Very, Terran very nice. Terran never existed. What, what, what's Terran? <laughs> I'm, I'm going yeah, to talk to my children and say, oh, I remember the days when Terran was a thing. They're like, dad, what's Terran? And then, uh, you know, I don't know, Son, man. You meant, I think you meant the word terrain. And yeah, the terrain yeah. is the ground that the Zerg and Protoss units walk on. So, Exactly. No. All right. But well, GG. GG. Well played by both our players. We have ourselves a grand finals bracket here, Fluffy Waffle. Yes, we do. And I'm going to make a change on the fly. Um, and I know we are actually like really ahead of schedule. So I'm going to change the finals to a best of seven. So the first player to win four games, we're going to be here, hopefully till the end. And um, uh, I think it's going to be, this is, this is a TVZ, which is arguably the best matchup in the game right now, I think. Yeah, you know, um, I, I think, I think it is, it's got some potential. I mean, we, we just determined that Terran Zimba, but right. maybe, maybe the savior race Zerg can, can fix all of that for us here in this best of seven. All right, so uh, we are going to be right back, and when we are back, we will go into the finals. Best of sevens, it is Holy Mackerel versus Boofty, our French Terran, and our South Korean Zerg. We'll see you in a bit. Thank you. 
All right, we are back. Welcome back to the Fox Waffle Cup, everyone, where we are in the finals. And the overlays, this is best of five, but they're lying because it's actually best of seven. Rushy, how are you? You here with me? I can't believe that you would lie to us. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I know. It's just a big old liar. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It's a lie in the good sense. We get more... Starcraft. I more Starcraft. Involves more Starcraft. Like, you know what? Okay. Like, I'll hook, accept. Hook me up, right? I mean, should be very interesting. All right. We're going to be hopping in. Straight into my veins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, this is a Zerg versus Terran on Purity and Industry. Purity and Industry. I wondered if we were going to see this map in this bracket. Might as well just be memes and dreams. Ellie. Yeah, memes because and dreams. One player is probably going to bring them. Probably going to bring the memes, and the other player is probably going to be like, eh, 
I, I can I can hold this. I can hold this proxy. I can do it. I believe in myself. We All are right. jumping in here. Game number one gonna be possibly possibly a long game. Spawning here on the industry side. Purity and industry are green Terran. Give it up. And in the top part of everybody's favorite map, LE, it is our South Korean Zerg, Holy Mackerel. The slow zones, Rushy. It will slow you, you know down. What? Here's like here's my take on the on the slow zones here in Purity and Industry. I I spent so much time in like the first month trying to fly my overlords around the slow zones. So I'm like, oh, it's going to get there faster if I try to <laughs> go out to the edge and then swing around. And and then finally, I just realized, no, you no. know, it's going to be it's going to be faster if I just go straight through them. So exactly outside of preventing Terran players from just making four banshees and going, lol, I can just fly to your base in 10 seconds. Um, You know, they're not too bad in this. However, it's that island map. Oh, yeah. The island map is what I get worried about in ZVT because it's so easy for a Terran player to just take a command center out there. If you're a Zerg and you don't scout it or That's... have the means of getting to it within about two minutes, uh, that base, the island base becomes practically impregnable. Yeah. And that's just free, undisturbed mining for the Terran. And, you know, when Terrans get another base, you know, you got to be careful. They're going to they're gonna drop mules. They're going to uh, entrench a position. And uh, it's, it's going to be bad. It's going to be a bad time. Well, Holy Mackerel is going to do everything he can to try and get some good scouting information in this game number one. Reaper's going to move across the map. It's a pretty standard uh, Rax expand opener by Boofty. So no memes just yet. No memes. So does that mean, does that mean Holy Mackerel is going to be bringing the memes? I'm not sure. Potentially. It looks rather normal, too. Yeah. All right, the Reaper's going to come in here and say, oh, there's nothing out of the ordinary just quite yet. Going to scuffle with the Zerkings here. Oh, he's going to lose it. Oh, yes, he is. That's that nice. That was the meme right there. <laughs> the meme chat. Yeah. Holy Mackerel's done it. There's your meme, boys. So that's going to take, uh, that's going to allow Holy Mackerel to just move right out to a third base in the top left corner. So... Uh, Holy Mackerel's going to do a little bit of scouting, try and get some Zerglings over to the left side. Those might be uh, swapped down to uh, be a bit of an annoyance later on in the game. Marine's going to push away the Overlord that would have scouted the third base going down in the main of Boofty. And, you know, that's a, that's a pretty far back main there. Yeah. I guess it could come forward to the grass, but... Boy, howdy, I'd love to just see that go island to the base? island base. Island base? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if we're going to get that lucky, though. I don't know if I, I don't know if our meme is a dream right now. I think it's just a nightmare at this point. <laughs> I'm hoping for good dreams. Always hoping for good dreams, Rushy. We have a metabolic boost on the way out here, and we're going to... Uh, the tech of choice is soon going to be revealed for Holy Mackerel. That's gonna point us in the direction of the game, uh, where it's where it's gonna go, and uh... do we have a bot in the chat? Is that what's happening right now? We have two bots in the chat. We Echo have... Steel, get him! Get him, Echo Steel! Fan Hammer. Do you want to? Do you want to become famous? Do I want to become famous? Yeah. Um, do you want to I... buy more followers? <laughs> Well, I already have 69 followers, oh, yeah. and that's famous enough. That, yeah, that I think that's like even better than like 2.9 million followers or something like that. Yeah. Loco thinks he's got it all figured yeah. out. Like, oh, I've got 400k subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have 69 you followers You don't have 69. That's right. Get it's out of here. It's going to be good. A good day. When, is that a fusion core? Uh, that's pretty I was going to say, can we yeah. talk about that fusion core? Yeah, let's do it. Um, It's making a battle cruiser. Or That's it's it. allowing the production of a battle cruiser right. at it's not Starport. Literally. Now, will these Link be able to get up and scout it? No. Nope. I don't think so. No. But now you you have to start thinking if you're Holy Mackerel. Okay, so there's no 
No third base down just yet. He hasn't, I don't think he's quite confirmed uh, that there's a third base in the main. Yeah. Uh, if only I could. Oh, okay. So he has, he has seen the third base. So he knows that there's a third base uh, alive somewhere. Right. But uh, the production would state that, uh, that he's probably going to go into something a little cheeky, only seeing Marines and Hellions. But I'll say that it's interesting. I mean, that might have been enough Marines to say, "Oh, he's he's gonna he's building up Marines. Maybe he's gonna go for a two medevac drop." Um, and, and if you look at what Holy Mackerel has across the map, he does have roaches. This mm -hmm. is his uh, speed timing once again, I believe. Yeah. Um, so this is gonna be the same build. I, I, I don't know. Up. I think I think if Holy Mackerel pushes across the map as this battle cruiser leaps over. Um, this could be a really strong push for Holy Mackerel. There won't be a whole lot back at home for Boofty to deal with it. All right, the battle cruiser has just engaged the Zerg main base. Now there is a spore crawler that was well timed. Look at that beautiful spore crawler placement. And uh, what's going on at second base right there? I think it's a Hellion run by. But um, yeah, these roaches can't hit air, man. It's just that spore crawler versus that battle cruiser. Get the queens uh, in there. See, that's, a, that's where the value of these roaches comes into play. I mean, he needs those roaches across the... He need, there's a whole natural open. Run them over. Yeah. Nice transfuse, though. Going to keep that spore crawler alive for a little while longer. But I think this battle cruiser... Wow. That nice kill. Well, good defense by Holy Mackerel. That was good. That was excellent. Now, imagine. Imagine, if you will, Holy Mackerel uh, cleaning that up and having roaches and zerglings cleaning up that natural. Boofty would be absolutely out of this game. But at this point, I mean, Boofty's not out of it yet. If he's left unattended, I mean, he's going to get he's going to get SCVs down at this third base. He's going to get production ramped up. He he could recover. I mean, mules are good. Yeah, and especially mech, right? Mech is so cost efficient against their units and uh, Cyclone's on the way. He's just gonna kite them back, and uh, hopefully, um, hopefully. I mean, I, I, I'm I'm assuming that Boofty hopes that uh, the Zerg will leave him alone just for a little bit, so he can uh, get back on his feet and produce these mech units. Uh, that is, what was that building? Was it a spire? Yeah. So it looks like Holy Mackerel is building a spire right now. Yeah. So these Hellions are gonna try and keep uh, Holy Mackerel back on his side of the map. Anytime you have a Terran and a Zerg even up on workers at this point in the game, the uh, favor is definitely in the Terran's boat. And and you're going to start watching Boofty's supply uh, start moving upwards. In fact, he is still creating SCVs as well behind this. Going to go into a little bit of battle mech as well. Some cyclones coming out onto the map this is this is a good this is a good response to uh to roaches here and he's gonna push down with this four cyclones will easily clean up this uh little roach counter push and i think the longer that holy mackerel waits i think the more difficult this could become uh the yeah. spire is now completed 18 more zerglings look at the gas bank for holy mackerel i think if wow. he takes all of his roaches and makes them into ravagers he's got a great army composition that can deal with uh boofty's battle mech yeah, and this is actually, I mean, a surprisingly closer game than I thought, considering that Boofy opened up battle cruisers. Um, but he's going. I believe that's um, what is the, uh, the upgrade for for cyclones? Is it Mag advanced? Field Mag field accelerator. Mag field accelerator, right? Uh, so just oh, more and more units. Well, holy, yeah, and Holy Mackerel is 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 hanging on right now. It, again, I think just playing a little more cautiously than he needs to. Of course, right now, uh, Boofty's got a good position held on his third base. He is able to get that fully saturated on minerals. We'll probably see gas start coming down in a moment, but Boofty continues to hold that worker lead, 50 to 42, and you're starting to see that Boofty's uh, completely caught up in supply. Yep. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised to see him jump ahead. He's going to get armory, a uh, double armory. So one one's going to be incoming for those uh, mech upgrades as Magfield Accelerator is going to get very close to finishing. So Zerglings are going to come in and scout and see the uh, fully min full mineral saturation at that third. And Holy Mackerel's going to be going, uh-oh, this, this isn't good. I, bad. I don't have the kind of economy that... I need to stay up with you. So, so he's going to move across the map. It's pushing. It's just going to be a matter of whether or not uh, he's got enough here. Although Boofy's going to move out uh -oh. here and see this uh, army, that army engaging. 
the uh, cyclones are gonna lock on lots of lock ons these corruptors all oh, these corruptors they're dead so exposed. super dead those are not going to be able to survive here uh boofy's gonna try and pull back here to the safety of this tank but that is so many cyclones wow and now magfield accelerator is just finished up so they're just gonna be more potent than ever and thor's on the production tab wow he's probably gonna have to look for a way to deal with those corruptors that he's building but um thor's a strong units rushing yeah, I don't, I don't know if the Thor is the right play at this point in the game. Uh, Boofy right. doesn't have the scouting information that he needs to determine that this is just going to be lots more uh, ground forces. The Thors are going to be just good in general. Every single one of these corruptors keeps getting cleaned up. It's a really good micro by Boofy yeah. here as he uh, locks on and pulls away. Um, okay, okay, so the Thors are going to be a good choice. It is going to be Muta's. Um, right. Uh, Holy Mackerel decides to pivot here using that gas bank that he has. But seven mutas at this point in the game, I, I just don't know if that's enough yet. And I, I am really uncomfortable with the work count in this stage of the game. I mean, supporting this kind of economy off of uh, 40, 50 workers, I mean, for both players at the very least, uh, that's that's not a good sign. Even though you have four bases, there there nobody's mining them at those bases, right? Yeah, Boofty's in a good spot um, economically yeah. uh, with with what he's got. He, he does have a lot of energy for mules. Um, he might be saving them for scans. I'm not sure. Uh, but I mean, this is such a scary army. And now you add two Thors into that mix, more Cyclones on the way. The, I mean, you, you even blink and those mutas are going to be gone if yep. you're holy mackerel and boofty's now uh he's maxed out uh, think about where we were five minutes ago in this game uh holy mackerel does a really nice hold but let's boofty get back into this game and, and this there is going to be a very difficult engagement here but that is a lot of wow. banelings that nice is a good counter to this yeah uh, a lot of those banelings do swing around to the right hand side and engage with just one or two cyclones so don't get incredible value but the Whoa. thors are going to get completely surrounded and picked off those are going to immediately fall and uh holy mackerel kind of making a game out of this yeah, I'm, that was, for the most part, the beginning of it, is it was a really good engagement of Holy Macro, but I'm think, I think he's starting to realize that he has a little too few troops, just a little bit, and um, he's going to have to rebuild. More and more Hellions do get picked off here, not going to be able to uh, have as easy time to deal with those Zerglings, but just enough show up on the backside here and clean all of this up. Boofty cleans up the entire army of Holy Macro out onto the map, Boofty, push forward. Yes, That's there right. he goes. He uh, drives on the creep. He realizes, wait a minute, you don't have anything anymore. So he's just going to engage onto this fourth base, and slowly but surely, this is going to get pushed over. GG is called. And Boofty, with a very, very surprising uh, turn here in game number one. Absolutely. Well done, Boofty. Vive la France. Vive, vive la France. All right, so our next map is going to be Simulacrum. How do you pronounce that? Is that how you, I mean, that's how I pr I've heard announcers announce Simulacrum. Yes, I think you are nailing it. All right, nice. Now remember, chat, this is upgraded to a best of seven. More StarCraft coming your way. We're gonna be headed to game number two on Simulacrum and uh, and Holy Mackerel's going to, uh, I, you know, I, I think he's going to have to try and pull out a different build here. I don't know if the plus one speed timing is going to be as effective in this long of a series. What do you think, Fluffy? Yeah, um, I mean, I'm sorry. Could you say that again? I'm, there's stuff going on in the background. Oh, not a problem. I, I was just... I was just gonna say that uh, I'm wondering if Holy Mackerel is going to need to work out another build in this best of seven series. I, I think if he's gonna go uh, plus one uh, roach time, speed roach timing every game, it might not work for him in the long term. Oh yeah, yeah, he's definitely gonna have to switch it up because I mean he's executed the same build um, here every game, right? Of course you're right, um, but if he um, if he switches it up, then um that he could potentially uh, open new avenues for um, for all sorts of things, you know, maybe uh, maybe he'll go 
build hydralisks or maybe he'll go mute as early on to, early on to the game i'm just very interested to see where this goes um i i do have to say yeah as a music teacher, I'm absolutely loving hearing the piano in the background. Yeah, 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 yeah. The kids are just doing piano. I mean, well, I couldn't really schedule it, but here we go. No, I, I think it's wonderful. I, it's a perfect addition to this stream. Here we are jumping into map number two, spawning in the top left, our green Terran up 1-0, looking to secure a second win in this series. Give it up for Le Bouffe and in the bottom right of this best of seven, we have our South Korean Zerg representing the plebs. It is Holy Mackerel. All right. So we're going to go ahead and wind up this game number two in rather normal fashion. But hey, can we give a quick shout out to all of the production value that Fluffy and Gabe have brought to this tournament so far? I mean, outstanding graphics, great transitions. What a fun setup here. Can we get some love in the chat for these two? They've been putting in some good work today. Absolutely. Thank you, especially Gabe. He's the one that's going to be observing today and um, I really appreciate all of you coming out. You know, we're just uh, trying to make the best viewing experience for you and um, we just hope you have fun. That's all That's all that we came here for. And maybe uh, maybe get a Discord Nitro on your way out, right? If you win the tournament. Hey, there we go. That's uh, not an insignificant prize here for, uh, for these players here in Platinum Gold. I mean, most times it's just like, hey, you get a chance to see your name up on the stream and you go i did it i won the game so be able to walk away with something tangible hey that's, that's pretty good it's a good way to spend a friday oh yeah and tomorrow we're gonna see some high level games i have some really good players lined up for saturday and uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see those nuke 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 maybe we'll see some nukes in this game Maybe. Maybe Boofty. Maybe Boofty will pull out some nukes. I mean, he's been showing us that he's got some different, uh, different strategies and build orders in the tank. Uh, we'll have to see if he pulls anything out new in this game. It's going to be a, a standard Rax expand here out of Boofty. Uh, Holy mackerel going into a, into the same. Oh, he's building speed this game. He's uh, got there these we builds, go. boys. We're in it. <laughs> We're in. So, Holy Mackerel is going to do a, a typical hatch gas pool, but he is going to grab a Zergling speed in this game. So we'll have to see where he wants to head. It is still possible that he goes into his plus one roach timing uh, with the Ling speed. It does hit just a little bit later, but it has a lot more uh, potential here at the opening of this match, being able to provide some harassment, uh, push off the Reaper. Uh, it's going to be a third, quick third base. Very quick, yeah. What do you make of that? Yeah, I think um, I think this means Boofty's here for the for the long run, right? You know, he's he's realizing, all right, you know, even though he's known to be somewhat of a cheesy French player, um, and he, of course, against his um, his game in Phos with Phosphorium, you know, he's proven that yeah, I can I can I can break out the meme builds, but. Uh, I think he's flexing his muscles as a main player uh, or as a good StarCraft player in general right now. And that third base is going to um, going to indicate that he's going to be in here. He's going to fight. So it's going to be a quick layer once again. Very, very strong indicator of uh, possible Muta play at this point. Uh, all four gases have been taken. This could be two base Muta. This could, yeah. And uh, it looks like he's gonna get uh, the the Baneling Evo Chamber wall behind this. Hmm. Yep. There's goes fire. The yep. So, so this is gonna be Mutaling Bane off a of two base uh, fusion core. Now, Ooh. Here's uh, okay. okay. So I think in this case, if uh, in a straight up battle, I think if you've got seven or eight Mutas versus one. Uh, battle cruiser. I think the mutas would win out in the end. Yep. Especially if you play safe and you stay over top of your base, you get the added support of the spore crawler of the queen. Uh, you can easily shut that down. But I think the value would be for holy mackerel in this uh, game number two. 
Yep. Get across the map. Let your base handle the battle cruisers. If you've got queens, if you've got spores, you can at least push it off. That's not a big deal. But I think the the extended value of those mutas would be to jump, surprise your opponent, clear up some mineral lines before your opponent can get uh, any turrets down. And at this point, I mean, there's no uh, there's no uh, <clears throat> engineering bay, mm -hmm. so I mean, you're not gonna you're not even gonna see turrets at this point. Yeah, and well, I um, I know that a few months ago, uh, Sue especially, um, he's known to make mute. He love he loves making mutas and. You know, he would make a lot more mutas than a lot of the rest of the people on the on the pro scene. But um, he would build mutas against battle cruisers, and that was his favorite way to take it down. But the key is just to have a lot of mutas, right? That's just that that's the key. I mean, you can't just have one or two. Battle cruisers do extra damage to light, and mutas are indeed light units, and they'll just melt them, melt them to pieces. So I keep watching Holy Mackerel's gas count, and he is spending a lot of gas here, getting a lot of upgrades, baneling speed on the way, plus one flyer attack, uh, plus one melee attack on the way. And then it does kind of cut into his muta count uh, here at the very beginning. So only four mutas are going to pop out for Holy Mackerel. And they're going to pop out just a little bit before this uh, battle cruiser. And actually, I like this play by Boofty. Boofty's going to fly the battle cruiser all the way across the map. That frees him up to leap away. Right. Um, if uh, if he does run into damage, so Holy Mackerel's gonna scout this uh, battle cruiser out. Five mutas are currently on. Nope. They, they've uh, excuse me popped already. There we go. Yeah, yeah, five mutas on the field. Two more on the way. Captain Undead says it's nine mutas without micro. Axel. Nice. So. So that, that seems to be the magic number, but uh, Boofty is already positioned uh, on the lower side of the map here. The the muta, the muta flock is, uh, that, that's not out in a way. That's just gonna be a scout. Yep. Um, again, I, I think the value here is, holy mackerel, you get out onto the map. I mean, look at that difference, 48 to 36 army supply. And the biggest, uh, the biggest fear of this army is the four supply that's sitting in your base, but here come the mutas. Mutas are gonna try and engage on top of this. They really need the support of that queen to uh, not just immediately fold over. And Boofy's just gonna leap on back. He doesn't wanna risk it. And uh, now Holy Mackerel's got an opportunity to uh, to respond. Yeah, we see Boofy here uh, just building up his infrastructure in order to sustain another battle mech army. And I think, uh, I think we found out his preferred play style, Cyclones and Hellions and battle cruisers and uh, and we'll we'll see how Holy Mackerel engages it differently in this game. You know, hopefully there will be better surrounds, there will be a better unit composition. But definitely switching up the builds, I think that helps a lot. Yeah, definitely, definitely in the, this game number two is exactly what Holy Mackerel needed to get a little bit of footing and uh, not just uh, bowing over to Boofty's. Uh, Booftiness. <laughs> Boofties and the booftiness, say. yeah. Yeah, his le booftiness. Uh, it's going to be more cyclones, so more battle mech on the way. Oh my gosh. The worst. Holy mackerel. Get yeah. those mutas in there. Yeah. Get them in there. Now is the time. The time for waiting is over. Yeah, the time for waiting is over. That Thor is in production, and the moment that Thor comes out, your time for flying away is now. Here he goes. Get in there, holy mackerel. Yeah, Get in there. Damage. Yeah, Come on, come on, come on. Oh, is, the Thor might pop right on top of the mutas. Who knows? No, just All about right, halfway there we done. Go. There He's going to get into that mineral line. Yes, right before that uh, turret's allowed to finish. Boofty's going to be caught off guard here. He's going to have to pull all of those uh, cyclones back to deal with this. But 13, 14. 14 oh, SCVs. I'm so excited by this. That is, that was excellent damage for what that was. And... Wow, that literally, I mean, I, I think Boofty was ahead, but that has put him back on even ground. And Holy Mackerel actually has 80 army. <laughs> yeah, Holy Mackerel has got the army advantage here. He, he just needs to be confident. He oh. He's worried about uh, throwing away too many units to the Terran player. And at this point in the game, I mean, I think you want to start trading those out. You want to start uh, whittling away his expensive mech units for your inexpensive Zerglings and start picking away at those mineral lines. So um, a good ground attack at that third base, that very exposed third base, pull the army forward, fly in the Mutas. 
that's the value of the mutilisk yep. um, in this matchup here. And look at those all mules. of those Ooh. mules. Think how valuable the damage would be here for Holy Mackerel if he just ran Lings in there and either shoved them away or even better, got a kill off on those. It's a nice cancel on the fourth, though. Very good. Yeah, I'm. I'm... Yeah, here we go. Yeah, look. So look how look how far out of position that army was. Imagine if he had 16 lings just run right on into that Manola. Yeah, does I? I'm just waiting for a ling run by. Look at those juicy, juicy mining, mining machines. All right. Whew. Mm -hmm. All right, they're about to time oh. out though. They. Yep. They're gonna, they're gonna get uh, their full value here. Yeah. And uh, Boofty, Boofty is once again trying to close that supply. Holy Mackerel doing a nice job of keeping the worker count. Which is good. He needs the he needs to keep that at least eight to ten uh, workers ahead of his opponent. But it'd be really nice to see him flood some uh, some drones into that fourth base. Get some nice uh, get some nice coverage on a four base economy. Uh, building another spire. Did double the spire upgrades. get picked off? And I missed it. No, he's he's looking for double air upgrades. I think so. Ah. Okay. All well, right. He's gonna be—he's gonna take a big, uh, big brave leap here and jump on top of these turrets. You gotta go. The rest though. of the army is gonna be in position, so he's not gonna get a lot of value out of that. Oh, he's gonna fly those all the way back Whoa. in. Oh, I don't agree with that. I Holy think mackerel. that was a misstep. That's bad. Ooh, that was very unfortunate for Holy Mackerel. I mean, he's investing so much in the air with that second spire right now, but he just lost almost all of his air units and uh, can't be engaging like that. It's a very, yeah, very wow. poor decision. Not when those mutas cost a uh, hundred gas each. He's gonna build some corruptors, so we could see him start trying to move into a greater spire. He does have hive tech on the way, but I, I think he's got to he's got to come up with something to hold him in the short term. Uh, Boofty's getting very close <laughs> to um, maxing out. Oh, is it possible that he just didn't realize that his army went back in on that engagement? Yeah, I think uh, I think he realizes why do I only have three mutas now? You know, that's that's really strange. I, now I don't know. He, I, I know he's been building corruptors, and I don't know if he's gonna go into broodlords or not. That's probably where he's gonna go into. Of course, investing this much into air. But last game he was building corruptors, and they didn't really do anything. You know, they just kind of stood there and accepted the bullets. What what do cyclones fire? Do they fire missiles? Technically, would be the term. Uh, I don't know what they're. Yeah, with. so so they so they do fire missiles, but technically the lock on is magic damage. Magic damage. All right. All right. Yep. Ignores so, armor, um, right? So. It's so it, it deals special damage that ignores armor, which uh -oh. is crazy to me. But you know that's <laughs> that's fine. Ter Terran is super underpowered right now. They uh -oh. just aren't winning or being represented in any tournaments. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just look how underpowered this is. Look at it. Wow. I can't believe it. <laughs> All right, those stores. Uh, so Holy Macro yeah. did line up a nice little run by, but unfortunately, I think he, uh, uh, an F2, pulled all of those Zerglings back to fight in the main army. Oh, that was his moment. He could have taken out that entire third base economy, but uh, Boofty, uh, really nice strong positioning here. Very good micro. Is going to try and set up here at the front of the third base of Holy Macro. 42 Zerglings on the production tab and a greater spire on the way. It looks like that uh, Holy Mackerel has been caught in mid-transition, and so he's going to have to have a tight defense here, or his fourth base is going to go down. Or is it fifth? Yeah, fourth base. No, that, that is the third base. He didn't take it at the traditional third base position, I don't think. But this battle cruiser goes down, and it looks like uh, Holy Mackerel came out on top of this. Kind of. Well, yeah, he got the Thors. Well, that was a, that was a very uh, interesting choke here by Boofty. Um, allowing most of his army to get connected on by those banelings. Uh, Greater Spire is in production. This, I mean, this could be a good transition here. Oh my God! Oh, those, drones. those drones are just stacked oh, up, ready you. to be, ready to be oh, flamed oh. away. Barbecue. Okay, and here comes the follow-up army by Boofy. This is where, this is going to be the the devastating damage damage here by. Uh, uh, Boofty. Um, oh my gosh. All of those oh, drones. Oh, oh it's a barbecue. Six. Oh no. Oh, get that. Get the get the grill out. Uh, fire up uh, Fire up some veggies on the barbecue. But look what's on the uh, menu. <laughs> we have broodlords. We do, but the broodlords are going to get jumped on top of. Unfortunately, they are not going to be allowed 
to morph in for a reasonable amount of time. They'll get a couple of broodlings out, but I think that's going to be all she wrote. GG. And game number two, going to our green Terran, showing how dominant he can be in this best of seven. I think that if Holy Mackerel took a couple better engagements, he would have won that one. But uh, that was a very close game. There were a few, definitely a few moments that Holy Mackerel had an opportunity to continue um, clawing his way back into this game number two. He's he's got he's got what it takes. I I think some some calm, confident play here in game number three, and I think we could see the scoreboard start to favor him just a little bit. That's right. Just depends on what he pulls out in this next game, and it is best of seven. Keep in mind. Um, let us go into our next ma Our next map uh, is going to be on Everdream, and um, yeah, looks like a lot of people got mad at me for lying. I'm sorry. The tournament came up a little bit short, so we're gonna have to play a best of seven, and uh, and I you know I I hope. Um, I hope everyone's okay with that. <laughs> you know, I'm just really disappointed that we get more StarCraft. Yeah. Oh, darn. How, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you, sir? Yeah. And I think we're going to extend this over to the next, to tomorrow's game. But I will make sure if I make that decision, I'll let everyone know beforehand so that they can, um, they can prepare. But here we go. We are hopping into... The third game in our best of seven is going to be Bufti versus Holy Mackerel. Here we go. Le Bufti. Le Bufti. He's just got a fun name to say. Yeah. He's also made some pretty good loco memes. I like it. What? What are? What? What are me memes? Me memes? Memes? I have no idea, man. Yeah. Can you? I don't know that I've ever seen one before. Um, yeah. Uh, here, let me go to Loco's uh, chat really quick and type <laughs> 11 head. <laughs> well, see, this is a funny picture. Is, is this what a Mimi is? I, th I think that's what a Mimi is, yeah. Oh! Did you just say that? <laughs> gotta call it something weird here, but you know, we can talk more about that in a little bit. We're jumping in to Everdream here for game number three, spawning in the bottom left, our green Terran. Looking to continue his reign superiority and Terran pride. Give it up for Le Boufte. And in the top right corner, clawing his way back into the series, hopefully, with this game. It is Holy Mackerel. One of these times I want you to say, Holy Mackerel! It's Holy, Holy Mackerel! <laughs> Holy <laughs> Next game, all right. <laughs> Missed opportunities right there, all right? It's okay. That's why. That's why we work together. And, right. And uh, we can we can feed off each other and make the cast great for everybody. Communication is key. Hey, do, do you want to hear a band joke that I heard? Do I want to hear a band joke? Absolutely. Lay it on me. All right. How do you know when the clarinet is playing too loud? I don't know how. When you can barely hear it. Here you go, you got I got another one. All right, go for it. All right, how do you how do you tune two oboes? How do you tune two oboes? You shoot one of them. <laughs> yep, I heard a different variation of that joke, like a very the very dark joke, but um, that that one's good. I like that one. Um, how how do you fix how do you fix a broken instrument? How with a tuba glue. <laughs> Too blue. There you go. How many trumpet players does it take to screw on a light bulb? I don't know how many. Eleven. One to actually do it, and ten to tell him how he could have done it different. I love it. Mm. Oh, let's see. Um, what are? Do I have other? I... I don't have any other good band jokes off the top of my head here, but this is a very interesting opening here. Uh, oh, yeah. Fifty deciding to go Marine first. Marine first. Yeah, he's not going to have that early game insight, but uh, he's going to be able to ward off this first Overlord away, interestingly enough. Going to deny this scout. 
So that's the big value of going for that marine first uh, um, uh, build order, is to prevent that initial scout from your opponent. That's annoying. So that way he can't see what you have going on in your main base. And for right now, I mean, it's already a tech lab down on the on the factory, and a tank is going to be coming out. A tank. A tank. As the opening unit. What do you, what do you make of that, Fluffy? I... I think he's gonna just turtle in. I have no idea what's going on here. This is different. This is probably I don't know if it's Battle Mech again, but maybe he maybe he will turtle in and I don't know what he's gonna go for. It's hard to tell at this point. Well the tank's gonna be a good choice here as Holy Mackerel is running across the map with six Zerglings behind it, throwing down a very, very early lair. Oh that's oh tank. Come on, tank. You're Siege! Oh. Siege! Oh no. Alright, so uh, with, Boom. So with this, yeah, that's going to be able to Boom. clean that up almost immediately. So, so the natural is going to be just fine. It's going to be a second tank second coming tank. out as well. Another tech lab going down on the. Hmm. Boofy, I'm can, still trying to make make sense of this here. Can you just build nothing but tanks? You know how you just built widow mines that first game, or the phosphorium built like just war prism. Just build tanks. Win the game with tanks. I, I, I guess you can, but <laughs> I mean, it, as as a Zerg player, you just hold down that Z button and, yep. and you just run Zerglings at your opponent's face until they die. But, huh? Well, we're 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 gonna see some turtle strats coming out of here from Boofty, and that should offer Holy Mackerel the opportunity to macro up. But he has taken his third base. Baneling Nest on the way. I imagine that Baneling Speed's going to be incoming shortly as well as the lair is already done. Yep. And do we have a Roach Warren or something put down? Because I'm very confused about what is going on here. Uh, I don't know what Holy Macro is up to. Very obscure builds here from both of our players, actually, right? Wow, that's yeah, so a fast infestation pit. Well, uh, it could be Swarm Host at this point. Swarm Host and Ling Bane. Um, I just, huh, huh. <laughs> wow. Interesting game number three here. If you came for, if you came for an interesting game, well, looks like you're gonna get one. Double wow. Armory going down for Boof. I think you, I think you might be right. I think you might be seeing a very, very, uh, interestingly timed mech push because two more factories are going down uh boofty has got a really strong grip on his natural he doesn't have any defense at his third just yet so he's gonna have to work tanks out to to that point but with double armory going down we will start to see uh one one started very shortly for our terran player and behind this it's just kind of a potpourri of zerg upgrades uh, plus one missile, plus one melee, plus one carapace, yeah. healing speed. It, it, Holy Mackerel is just getting every single possible unit and upgrade he can. Yeah. And it looks like it could be Swarm Host. Oh, wow, that's a hive going up right there. Hive, hive. Wow, that's a uh, six minute hive, though. That's, that's really early. Um, wow. Just bamboozled, Rushy. I, I'm at a little bit of a loss for, for words right now. Um, very, very Four. interesting play style. Uh, we see a Hydra Den go down, so the potential for Hydra Link Bane will be available, which does explain. Oh, we might get some Infestors coming out here. Um, yeah, look at that. As the uh, Infestor upgrade has been started. Maybe Lurkers? Glands, right. I believe. Yep. Uh, I don't know if we'll get lurkers in this game. Lurker, lurkers and infestors. That's a, a large gas uh, requirement, and six yep. gases uh, just is not going to be enough to to withstand that in any large number. But who knows? We've seen weirder. Oh yeah, but um, no, I, I think you're right. I think we're probably going to see infestors out on the field, maybe, and neural parasite. Woo! Maybe, maybe we'll get some juicy hits. How about that? That's an Ultralist Den, or Ultralist Cavern, excuse me. That's an Ultralist Cavern, my friend, and uh, we're going to see Ultras. 
Fluffy, hold me. I think Holy Mackerel is just <laughs> going for the I'm building every building this race has to offer game. <laughs> and uh, and he's just he's just going for it. No, what don't. an interesting build. Adrenal Glam's coming down as well. 2-2 two, two melee and carapace on the way. Lings are gonna move out onto the map. I I still don't know what to make of all of this. Alright, fourth base under fire, but I don't know if you can tell, Rushy, but I'm giving you an internet hug right now. All right, oh. this is uh, every 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 unit in every tech building in the game <laughs> by eight minutes, <laughs> by 10 minutes. Yeah, I, I'm wondering if there's like maybe a StarCraft 2 achievement or something. Um, Meg Flight Road or, or no, Meg, what what is that? I don't one? know what that um, is. Uh, is that it's something servo, smart servers? No, hyperflight oh, rotors. That might be servo. That might be the servos upgrade. OK, OK. I have no idea. I was thinking that's... that was the um, Banshee speed upgrade, but no, I think you're no. absolutely right. I believe that is um, the servos upgrade that allows mech units to uh, that transform to uh, shift just a little bit faster. And we'll see it here in a moment. Um, Blue flame just about done. Smart servos. That yeah. Name of that upgrade. Because so. it wasn't connected to a starport, and I was like, the Banshee speed, huh? I was like, all right. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes when you just quickly glance and look, you just look at the the little icon that Game Heart shows you, and you just don't look much further uh, out from that. And right. what what an in, what an interesting game we have <laughs> uh, boiled up here. Wow, is that a like? That's uh, Kitness plating, I think, on the way, right? So yep. he's gonna lean into ultras here. Oh, yeah, Goofy so sees it. He actually he actually grabbed the ultra speed upgrade first. Oh, okay. And then went for Kitness Plating, which I don't know if I entirely agree with, but it would protect him from it would protect him from concussive shell if it were on the field, which it's not. We know that this is an all mech uh an all mech combination and I don't I, I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah. Um, I think Holy Mackerel has a nice balance of units to deal with the army that Boofty has, but Boofty just has so much army. 93 to 63 army supply 164 to 20 125 uh boofty's sitting out on a fourth base there are banelings there are lings but i think uh i think the tank positioning in the back of the the line for boofty is just going to be too strong yeah and uh well holy macro hasn't built the proper economy in order to support a massive army look he's um 50 supply down as is, and even investors on the way, more ultras. He, Rushy, he is buying very expensive units, and um, don't he doesn't he doesn't have the income for it. He's buying it on and credit card. Can't, I was gonna say you can't charge, you can't charge units in this game. Yeah. Tasteless. I mean, fluffy. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, don't know where I've heard that. Yeah. Very good scout here from uh, Holy Mackerel is gonna see this army move out across the map and holy mackerel's got to be going ah oh, crap i can't beat all of this even with the world's greatest surround but he is going to try he is going to uh spread out his units he does have some infestors uh neural neural parasite oh, surround uh was not researched no so he does not have access to neural parasite uh the army is going to be allowed to walk into the fourth base here it is pretty Look. far out onto creep i mean that base just melted unfortunately. yeah just got deleted here the engagement here uh oh uh, some units do wrap around Whoa. the backside. a really really nice um bungle growth and no the, the ultras the ultras clean up a lot of that army but there just isn't a lot behind that Thor as well man. So, uh, so more Thors uh, will be difficult to deal with. Uh, 34 Lings on the way, three more Ultras. I think Boofty just needs to back up for a brief moment and make sure that he doesn't toss away all these armies. And just as plus two missile attack is allowed to finish here, these Queens are just gonna get <laughs> absolutely obliterated. One Hellbat is all it takes to zone out all of those Look at things. That. Oh man. And without the Zergling support, these ultras are just going to melt. GG is called and Boofty moves himself to a match point situation. Match point indeed. And uh well that has certainly been interesting. Very fast hive and um building a lot of tanks. That was uh that was interesting to say the least. I think uh, I think Boofty has lived up to his hype, but I'm 
I want to see Boofty style on this guy. All right, I want to see him do some something a little cheeky. All right, if he fails, don't worry, he's up a, a couple points. But uh, if he does, that would be an, in a very nice finale. Um, but I'm also rooting for Holy Mackerel, man. That's uh, uh, he's a Zerg player. Brothers, brothers in arms, right? Well, brothers in claws, I think. Brothers in claws. There we go. All righty. So we are going to be jumping to our fourth game of the series. This is a best of seven. So we are in match point for Boofty. Holy Mackerel could go on the win streak of his life, winning four in a row. And he will be the Fox Waffle Cup plat gold bracket champion. But he's got a long hill to climb if he wants to do that. It's going to start on Nightshade. We're going to have to see what... We're going to have to see what kind of strategy he goes for. I would love to see. Okay, hear me out. All right, yeah. I'd love to see a 12 pull. <laughs> I think of all the maps that it could be viable, I think this is the one. This is the I one. Think, uh, a really tight, crisp timing cheese. I think could... Holy Mackerel could get himself a little bit of momentum. All right, we just got to whisper in his ear. All right. Um, here we go. Uh, we can we can influence this. Like, All right, here we go. Uh, like uh, here we go. We're just gonna do twelve. Pool. Twelve. Pool. pool. Chat. Join 12, us. Twelve. Pool. Pool. Twelve. Pool. Twelve. Pool. Twelve. Pool. Do it. Twelve. Pool. Twelve. Come on, chat. Help us. Twelve. Pool. Twelve. Pool. There you go. There we go. We 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 got him in. Twelve. Pool. Do it. Do it, holy mackerel. Do it. All right. We'll see what's going to happen here in this. Wow. Thanks, Wagon, dude. Really, really killing my vibe here. <laughs> wow. I'm not even going to respond Got roasted, to man. FTW cheese. Spawning in the, in the bottom right. Our green Terran on match point. Can he clinch the 4-0 victory in this series? Give it up for Boofty. And in the top left of Nightshade Ellie, unfortunately not going for a 12th pool. Our South Korean Zerg, Holy Mackerel, it's Holy Mackerel. I did it. You did it. <laughs> I did the I'm thing. I'm actually really, you know, I'm, I'm less disappointed in Holy Mackerel, not 12 pooling. I'm yeah. more disappointed in chat. I, I was expecting more hype. And thank you. To, to Gabe. Gabe, who was also observing at the time. Phosphory, you're my hero. Yep. The rest of you, you can do better. Yeah. And I expect better in the next opportunity. But, exactly. you know, it's fine. I don't hold a grudge. I don't I don't needlessly call people out for uh, for being in Gold League because uh, that would be... That would make it sound like being in Gold League is a bad thing. All right, Rushy, what is this? Double gas. Yeah. Okay, so we're still going to get a, a, an interesting, aggressive build. Uh, Holy Mackerel makes it sure that uh, he's not uh, having anything weird happen at the edge of his creep. Uh, builds the spawning pool out just a little bit further. All right. That's pretty standard, standard uh, for... Um for boof to wait did he go marine first uh i think he already built his first marine nope he hasn't but he's building a what is it a reactor right now on that um on that factory yeah that's, that's pretty standard yeah. uh, opening here for terran to get that reactor after pushing out your first unit but uh but yeah, I think you're right the the slight variation here is that he doesn't pull out um, he doesn't pull out a, a marine or even a reaper. So the overlord is going to be allowed to scout for free if uh, if he does want that to come on in. <gasps> and he's just going to choose not to build any bio out of it. So it could be a fast jump into uh, fast jump into mech. And that appears to be the case. Uh, second factory going down as well. Very, very, very quick layer. Even quicker than the, the last couple of games. So... Yeah. Um, double, double Evo chamber wall coming down at the front here. 
Maybe a Nidus. Uh, it's possible that we could see the a same build as uh, what Holy Mackerel did in game number two. I mean, this might lean towards Lingbane Muta once again. Yeah. Uh, let's just hope Boofy doesn't build Thors because uh, <laughs> strong unit. So, uh, Hydralisk. Okay, so we've got a Nidus network coming down as well. So here's what i think is interesting um ling ling hydra because there's no mm. bane ling nest right uh ling hydra is awful flimsy for diving into your opponent's base and trying to deal as much damage as possible he's got good ap or good d uh, dps mm -hmm. but i don't know if he's gonna have the uh stability to hold that down yeah and the only advantage holy mackerel has in this is that he hasn't been scouted yet but Oh, never mind. I uh, I take that right back. He does. He's prepared for that Nidus now. Look at that. He's bringing his Hellions back into the main base. And without those Banelings, yeah, this army is going to be super flimsy, Rushy. And uh, and Holy Mackerel is going to have to pull a rabbit out of a hat. Pull the Zerglings out of a Nidus. He's going to have to pull the Zerglings out of the Nidus. I agree entirely. Is that a Lurker, um, then? The <laughs> Holy Mackerel is actually a little underwhelming for wanting to do a Nidus timing. He is going to put down a Lurker, then as well so yeah i yeah. mean we're, we're we're we asked for something creative and interesting and we we're it. gonna get it yeah the cyclone's gonna swing around the left side of the main trying to spot for that overlord uh to see where that vision's gonna come the overlord that's hanging out at the natural is gonna continue to survive at least for the now but i don't like the positioning of these overlords there just isn't any good engagement uh, prepared for Holy Mackerel here. Holy Mackerel is going for that plus one uh, missile and carapace upgrade. But I think the longer this goes, the more difficult this is going to become for Holy Mackerel. Yeah, the window of opportunity closes really fast on a Ninus, especially when your opponent is aware of it. He's just going to station his units at home and kill the Ninus before it even pops up. Um, that Overlord is going to go down, and that means now... Holy Mackerel has zero vision on the other side of the map. Where is he going to put the Nidus? Who knows? And I think the value of this Nidus Worm um, is going to drastically decrease uh, the further out in front of Boofty's bases that it goes. Mm -hmm. And as you stated, I mean, with Boofty scouting this uh, almost a full minute ago, Boofty's able to get really good vision of his base. He's got Hellions on patrol in the main, so any dark spaces that holy mackerel would normally be able to drop a nidus will just be uh super visible and uh, this just becomes more and more difficult now um overlord speed is allowed to complete so this overlord is going to dive on in we're going to see if holy mackerel is going to try and commit into this nidus lurkers Again, full vision full vision right now for boofty Maybe maybe the Ninus Worm was just meant to like psych him out, you know, like, oh I'll keep your units at home while I build units. Who knows? That is very true. I don't know I don't know how much I like Lurkers versus Battle Mech. I feel like the Battle Mech, especially with the Cyclones. And actually I the way that that Nidus network is kind of pinned in there, yeah. I'd be inclined to agree with you. Although there go the Lurkers. Lurkers are gonna load themselves in. And we're going to have to see where Holy Mackerel wants to drop that Nidus worm. It looks like it's going to be the backside of the main. But, I mean, that's the only place he's got vision at this point. Yep. And he's going to load his lurkers into the Nidus den. Or the Nidus... Oh, what am I saying? The Nidus worm. And wow, a secret hidden... Wow, wait, 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 what's with this expansion thing here? I have no idea. If he wants to keep his opponent uh, guessing, he's sure keeping everybody guessing at this point. Oh, yeah. Um, Look okay. at that. Boofty's on top of this. He he knows something. There we go. He knows something's going up. This Nidus Worm's not going to see the light of day, Rushy. No. No, and the Overlord's also going to get picked off as well. And at this point, if you are if you are Boofty, you, you've got to suspect that you've got a reasonable army lead. And I'd love to see him just push across the map. He's already got Hellions over at the front of the natural. Try and get some sort of scouting information. He does see a really large wall. He sees a lot of Hydras. This could just prompt him into a, a large amount of... Uh, could just prompt him into a large amount of 
um, economy. Yeah. But uh, at, at this point, uh, Boofy's going to hear the Nidus Worm goes down. That's going to probably keep him stationary on his side of the map, at least for a little bit, because he doesn't quite know what's headed his way. But in reality, Holy Mackerel's just moving uh, to the lower left-hand corner, so that way he can populate one of his ninja bases. Yeah, I'm sure Boofy's very confused. He's like, you got creep over here, but you don't have a base over here. And uh, Holy Mackerel is just taking these bases in really unconventional places. I mean, even skipping the fourth base location and going straight for his fifth and is probably what was meant to be eighth, probably even meant to be Boofty's base. But, um, all right, oh, we got lurkers. We got a hit squad of lurkers. Six of them coming down. Oh, you better, you guys better burrow. Oh, no. Oh, this is terrible. Yeah, and, and actually, and the scan makes this absolutely impossible for those lurkers to survive. And and that's and that's my big fear of lurkers against Battle Mac is one scan and that those uh, cyclones just lock on and, uh, and there's just no... There's no turning back. Your lurkers are just tossed away. The fourth base is going to go down. The third base more than likely is going to fall next as this mech army swings forward. He sees the creep and he goes, huh, I guess I can pick this off too. And now suddenly Holy Mackerel is all the way back to a two base economy with uh, Hive just finishing and not a, a, a whole lot to speak for. And that's going to be that's all GG. it takes. GG is called and Boofty the strong 4-0 victory in this grand final well done to all the players um that was that was pretty good uh good job boofty i'll be contacting you here in a little bit and uh hopefully we can get acting you here in a little bit that was the stream sorry guys <laughs> i'll be contacting you here in a little bit and just to claim your prize and uh well we're going to end a little bit earlier than expected, but thank you, everybody, for coming out. Thank you, Rushy, for doing an amazing job casting, and um, I hope everybody had fun. Now, tomorrow, we are going to uh, have our Master Diamond Bracket. Let me bring up my blank bracket here. That's May 23rd. That is tomorrow. Yes, indeed. And we will be... Um, I've made the executive decision since we had a lot of time today. Where's my bracket? I'm so confused. Oh, 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 here it is. Um, that the beginning, I will change this for tomorrow, but they will be playing best of fives, and then we're going to end with the best of seven. Maybe to add one or two StarCraft games, and then because we're going to... I originally planned it to end maybe an hour from now, but we're going to start off with best of fives, and then we're going to uh, end with best of sevens. Uh, end with a best of seven and I think that'll be that'll be good Starcraft for the time slot that I have um, That I have put so uh, thank you very much for coming out and uh, I hope I see you tomorrow Goodbye <laughs>